have been a fangirl of fine art photographer Kiyoki Flagg's work for years. <laughs> this was the photo that did it. Little did I know that one day we'd meet, discover we have worlds in common, and that we'd be sitting here this fine day in his gorgeous Gallery Kiyoki in Squaw Valley, California, having this chat. Life, she is magical. Kiyoki's story doesn't exactly fit on a page. He traveled around the world with his family as a youth, which opened his mind and heart to embracing a big, beautiful life. But some of the bullet points are, Kiyoki's client list over the past 20 years covers the gamut from local to international. His work has been seen in print, film, and video, with subjects ranging from sports to luxury, portraits to hair-raising extreme skiing. He does photography full-time, owns an incredible world-class gallery in the prestigious village at Squaw Valley, California, travels the world, has been to Antarctica twice, and documented the emotional journey of the first spinal cord injured athlete ever to reach the South Pole, lives his life as an artist, and visits with Karen on the chat. He believes that photography becomes art when it embraces three things, is original, is emotional, is timeless. I think those three qualities describe both Kiyoki's work and Kiyoki the human perfectly. I am so thrilled to share with you photographer, speaker, artist, citizen of the world, Kiyoki Flag. Hey everybody, it's Karen Hutton and the chat with Karen Hutton. Sound bite sized insights from some of the coolest people on the planet, one of whom I'm sitting here with, Kiyoki Flag. Oh my God. Kiyoki is, as you know, a fine art photographer here in Squaw Valley, and we're sitting in his gallery. Oh my goodness, this place. If you're ever in Squaw Valley, you have got to come and see this place. It is phenomenal. And there's a bit of a story. Well, it's, it's been a process. Yeah. And I'm very excited to be at this point because I feel that we've been evolving since we started 10 years ago. Yeah. And um, I'm not exactly sure where we're going next, but um, it's very exciting to, to have a, a platform to measure growth. And, and to meet other people that push you. You just said something really important, which is now part, we're gonna be talking a lot about life as an artist and being an artist and what that means. But Kiyoki is one of those people that has made art a business. So you just said it's a place to measure. Oh yeah. What do you measure? Well, um, there's a couple of variables we measure in the gallery. I, the thing that's probably maybe to a fault, the most important thing to me is, is how it feels to every person who comes in the door. And um, we've gone through an incredible transition from when we started. This originally was what we call a traditional gallery. The mm -hmm. walls were white. We had lots of different art. Wow. When I started, I partnered with an international art broker whose specialty was modern masters. So he carried work by some of the greatest uh, artists of modern times, Picasso, Chagall, Moreau, Calder, Dali, and as well as contemporary art from all over the world in all different mediums. Oh. So we had sculpture, glass, bronze, oh. you name it. I was the token photographer. The, the, I guess you could say the negative thing is that I got so overwhelmed with the business component um, of the gallery that I stopped being able to be the creative. Right. And I would talk to people about my art on the walls, about these magical moments and being in the moment, but I didn't feel like I was living anymore. Hmm. So I'm incredibly grateful to have been able to start over. And three years ago, I got some new partners. We started with a brand new concept. Wow. And lo and behold, we haven't looked back. The biggest thing that came out of the process for me, though, was, you know, this question of what is art? Right. Because, you know, if I looked at what was common between these masters and these other contemporary artists of my own, you know, it was a broad spectrum of, of messages and media. And, you know, so the, the, the rule, if you will, if there is a rule that defines what art is, has to be pretty basic, pretty right. simple. Right. So first and foremost, original. And you, you look at a Picasso. Original. Yeah. You look at a Picasso, you, mm -hmm. you yeah. can, even if someone knocks off a Picasso, right. you know it's a Picasso. Well, and I talk about signature all the time. Yeah. You know, your own soul's imprint, your own spark of divine fire, if yeah. you want to think of it that way. And that's kind of what you're talking about here. Absolutely. And, you know, when it's achieved, it's unmistakable. You know, it, yeah. it just resonates. And, and, and not a lot of the people who come through our doors maybe not don't understand it for that but they they smell it they feel it so you know one of the things that I've actually really focused on recently is is when is photography art because so mm -hmm. many of the other medias it doesn't naturally you know so if you and I were to pick up a paintbrush mm -hmm. and paint and paint that scene over here we would never paint the same thing um boy I'll say since I can't paint <laughs> yeah. at all well, not, I'm not much of a painter either but <laughs> But painting, sculpture, 
glass, yeah. bronze, yeah. encaustic, whatever it might be, yeah. there's something about the elemental component of the art form that is not only self-defining, but it's it's original. It, yeah. It's never the same. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think photography, especially with the proliferation of our technology, is getting harder and harder to really truly be original. Mm -hmm. Because we are so pre-programmed the way things are supposed to look with the digital image. And, go, and there's so many rules. Oh, I know. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, the horizon lights flat oh. and everything's in focus oh, and sun at your back. Yes. And, and, you know, what's amazing is we are so pre-programmed, it's... it's we, we fall into it without even being aware right. of the preconditioning. Mm -hmm. So um, I really started to bring that filter to everything I do. And, you know, there's this expression out there that's been used a lot with photography. Yeah. It's like about being in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, that's a little bit too obvious. Yeah. And I would think that applies to all arts. Right. You know, it's like there are certain times when whatever your subject is, when it's it's the right time and it's the right subject and it's the right light and it's right. the right feeling, you know. I do adventure sports and I work outside in nature and right. boy, the timing is everything. But I would like to argue that that's where it begins. You know, it's it's not being at the right place at the right time. It's what you do with it in the right place. At the so right you time. have a really specific way you look at this. You have you say that when if you had ten, you line I love that no matter what you're talking about, you line up ten of fill in the blank. But in this case, line up ten photographers on the same scene. Yeah. If and if 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 the shot that you take uh -huh. is something that that they would have taken, uh -huh. and and you'll be surprised at how you can see if you have an idea in your head of what it's supposed to look like, how many people will fall into that. Yeah. If, if the end result is that there's similarity between what anybody next to you would have done, then it might be a great photograph. You know, it might be an incredible scene at the right time, but it's not art. In order for it to be art, it has to be your own unique interpretation mm -hmm. of what you're experiencing emotionally. God, I'm talking about that all the time. Yeah, yeah and it's and you, if you apply that test to it, yeah. um, it, it, it's unmistakable. Now, so if anything, you know, here's the thing. Next time you're inspired, you you got to grab your camera, you got to take some shots. Uh -huh. Just take a second and ask yourself, if I saw this published, whether it's on the internet, in a magazine, wherever, what would it look like? And you almost always have an answer. Now, if you feel compelled to, to take that picture, do. Right. But then push yourself. Find a way to find original perspective. Now, you used to do this. This is interesting because, you know, you've been doing this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. You used to do it with uh, all the different camera formats and the different emulsions. And, you know, it's like mixing your own paint, you know, in essence, in photography. Yeah. Um, but now, with the digital age, you're finding different ways to do this. Well, Which I think is really interesting. Yeah, I'm, and I'm super grateful because you know I'm 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 a dinosaur in the sense that I my first photo class I learned to build my own camera, yeah. create my own emulsions. Yeah. I spent 20 years in the dark, and yeah. there's such a beautiful tactile, magical component to the the way the photography feels, not only in the end result but right. in doing it. And I feel like some of that's being lost with our technology. I mean, our new technology and our cameras are amazing. You know, and in some ways it's freeing me up to be looser and looser, but th it's still very controlling. I mean, just the idea of taking a picture and immediately looking in the screen and seeing the result. Mm -hmm. We used to have to wait a week or two to get the results back. <laughs> I know. And, I and there was a discovery process. Yep. That, that, I don't know, maybe it's the child in me, but there's that magical component of seeing what, what you created. And I also think that pre-visualization element that we've heard from yeah. so many of the masters out there that is so critical in realizing your unique original vision. Um, if you've got immediate feedback, I think in a way it almost dissolves the need for that. And as a result, we don't always dig deeper. So I, I, where I'm most grateful right now with what's happening in my art is that I think we found a way of blending both worlds. And um, I don't know, it just seems to be taking me in this direction. So how do we experience the world? Getting back to the definition of art, right, okay? Right. In, for something to be art, it's real simple. Mm -hmm. In my definition, and again, I'm sure there's uh, people who would argue this, but quite simply, first and foremost, it has to be original. Second of all, it has to impact you emotionally, mm -hmm. deeply, whether mm -hmm. it makes you happy, sad, angry, whatever it is. When an inanimate object can move you to yeah. emotion, um, that's art. Now, I had a component where there should be a timelessness to it. Right. Um, it should be a, an emotion, um, or a positive inspiration, because that tends to be where, where I draw my, my juice from and mm -hmm. I get the most excited. Mm -hmm. But this idea that you can translate that onto someone who doesn't have that experience, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. But how do we experience the world? Like when you go to the top of the mountain for sunrise, you know, all that effort you put in and the temperature and all those components, 
affects how it feels. Right. But most importantly, it's a 360 degree experience. Right. You know, it's, it's everything around you. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But we can only see 160 degrees. So what about all the stuff that's missing? Right. Um, and I guess you could say that's where I've been taking it recently. The, the art that I'm most excited about right now is my most recent stuff and their stitches. Right. And what this I, one that you're seeing in the background here is one of them. It's huge. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And we're having so much fun with it. But again, when I'm out there in this moment, it's unmistakable. Anybody's there, we feel it. Yeah. And instead of, you know, like Ansel Adams would spend a day to get one shot. I find myself now spinning in circles, desperately trying to capture as much information as I can in that moment before it's gone. Right. And what I'm doing is I'm, uh, I'm still, I mean, I've always done this, mm -hmm. okay, whether it's for National Geographic or Ski Magazine, whatever it is, I've gotten really practiced in refining my frame. Mm -hmm. And I was so, I created all these rules for myself that I had to follow. And one of them was I did all my composition in camera. So I, even when I did my own printing, I would show the outside of the border mm -hmm. to show you that you're seeing what I saw. Mm -hmm. Well, at the same time, I would also try to take a panoramic picture of the scene because, I mean, that's was beautiful and that's what I felt like. So I was trying to do two things. And then on my crazy days, I'd maybe not maybe even a third element and I'd use a, a tooth trigger or I have an assistant. And I, I just kept trying to do more and more. Uh -huh. And I kept trying to carry more and more equipment. Right. And now, it's really simplified. I identify that frame, yeah. and then I see how the rest of the frame fits into everything else around me. Right. Okay, so it's integrating that action shot with the bigger world that makes it feel the way it right. is, outside of the realm of human vision. And you stitch. And you stitch it together. How, like for instance, this one back here, how many images is that? That one's a small one. I think it's only seven pictures. Oh. Uh, but the one on the left here is 22. This one here is 16. And what I'm finding is not only am I stitching mm -hmm. on the horizontal plane, mm -hmm. I'm now starting to stitch on the depth plane. Oh, really? As we have focus elements, so we keep on Stack covering. Stacking? S stacking, but. For depth? Yeah, for depth, for exactly. Fo focus stacking is yeah. what I mean. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you're getting to your film side of things. I know. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. And, and so I just keep discovering new and new layers. Uh, but here's one of the things I really love about, mm -hmm. about these stitches. First of all, we can't see it. So it's kind of back to the whole magical thing. It's only later that we discover what you have. And you kind of have to trust your own instincts of what are the rel rel relevant information that uh -huh. you need right. to translate it. Right. Now, in the end, you end up having, you know, from that one, maybe it's a sunset or a sunrise, there might be a 20 minute cycle that I have end up with 30 or so stitches. Right. Um, when I put them together, there's always one that rises to the surface. It's amazing. And I, when I bounce it off my team, we all gravitate to the same image. Right. The other thing that I really love is there's always a very logical beginning and ending. You know, so when I look at the composition, I know when it's, where the ends are. Any right. more information is unnecessary, right. any less is missing something. And what's interesting is that the proportions, the height to length, varies from image to image. And it's no longer limited by any format. Right. But, so by definition, the images define themselves. And if that's not a definition of original, I don't know what is. And it almost tells me yeah. what it's supposed to be. Right, and letting it come in, that's like part of the art thing. Yeah. We only have a couple minutes left. Okay. So, so, I mean, <laughs> we, we can talk about this I know, days. we can go yeah. for hours. So, yeah. uh, two things. One, so the, the three things that you feel may take photography from a, a technical thing into art, the original point of view. Mm -hmm. What's the second one? It has to impact you deeply in emotion. It's an emotional image. Right. Um, and a timeless, unmistakable message. Yeah. You know, you feel it, it once resonates and, on a primal yeah. level. And hopefully you get the wow and then it pulls you in. Right. Um, and the closer you get, the more you discover our technology. These are face mount technologies. Right. So they're true photographic emulsions with high silver content paper behind laminated glass. Right. And it's almost like a window to the outside world. Right. Remember the transition from analog telescope to high def? Yes. I mean and so it's and it's intensified how it feels. Right. So um the challenge is the scale. So the first time I produced that picture on the wall there, I mean, we're showing it here, I was 20 feet in scale, I produced it 10 feet, and I'm thinking, that's gonna be a big photograph. It was only six inches tall. It didn't work. <laughs> yeah. So what we've had to do now is we've evolved this whole new technology where we're helping our, our, our consumers, whether it's commercial or residential, people who come to us, they describe, they show us their space, we photograph it, they tell us how they want it to feel, and then we come up with original tr solutions where we drop the picture in digitally um, beforehand and help them see how it should look. 
So that picture that I described, those 10 feet, right. we ended up, we took that same image, we produced it 40 feet in scale in three panels and ran it down three planes of a stairwell. And when you're standing in the center, you could only look at one panel at the same t at a time. Uh -huh. But when you look at it from, from far away, you get this overall expanse of what it feels like to be on top of the mountain. So this is part of my, my final question for you, um, and which is this conversation about art, which is which the conversation is timeless. Yeah. And it's about whether you're talking about your art, whether you're talking about a life worth living, you know, yeah. artfully. Living but life. You also make a business out of this. You make money doing this. Can you easily say, because this is, this is the... There's this, nothing easy about that. No. <laughs> and it's, it's, Don't it, I know it. Boy, it, yeah. It, 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 you, it, do you have, have a thing you can... Because this is the thing that, that the conversation I hear over and over again amongst photographers trying to do this artful thing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, and this is why, you know, you spent two things. You spent time making the decision whether you wanted to, to do it that way yeah. or if you just wanted to do it as your passion because there's a very definite decision, business or passion. Yeah. Not that the passion isn't in your business, yeah. but taking it to that place is different. How, is there some piece of advice or sage from here looking back that you can share with anybody? Trust your heart, be true to yourself, and as long as you, you can have an honest, honest conversation with yourself and constantly um, be willing to revisit. Uh -huh. if, if, you, if you truly listen to yourself and you, you're passionate about it, then you'll be happy and you'll keep doing it. Right. The business component, I made a, a, a critical leap about three years ago. Um, and that's when we transitioned from the old gallery to what we are now. Right. Um, there's a new word that entered my life. It's called collaboration. And I have an extraordinary team. I mean, just this relationship here is a great example of yeah. how much I'm learning from, from your background and understanding and perspective. Um, I, I have an incredible team who I work with who, um, more than anything, have taught me to let go and focus on what I'm best at. And that has exploded my creativity yeah. and their ability to bring a business application. So I have a business partner, Lynn Gibson, who's, who's amazing. And what, what I described about how do we integrate art into space, uh -huh. this whole concept, most people cannot pre-visualize what it looks like. Right. And most people, especially people who are in the field, have a predefined idea of what art is supposed to look like, how big, where you put it, all those things. And by definition, that's not art, it's, right. it's commercial. Right. And so uh, if, if you can partner with some other creatives that can bring that other component. Nobody does it alone anymore. No, you really, I really don't. don't. I really don't believe that they do. I really think the world is built on community, yep. collaboration, and uh, ideas bouncing and reforming and reshaping into more ideas. I couldn't agree with that more. Yeah. I mean, that's why we're here today. Yeah, right? exactly. And um, for me, just, just um, you know, trusting the process and when you meet other people sharing, yeah. not feeling like you got to be proprietary, what you learned, and, right. and again, finding your own vice, being original, and finding people who share that path exactly. with you, who can, who can bring out those other skill sets that, that can make it a, a professional uh, opportunity. Yeah. Um, and, and, but find your own voice, be original, be an artist. Be an artist, live yeah. your life as an art. And on that note, Kyoki Flag. Oh, we're done already? Um, yes, oh, isn't that amazing? I know. Yeah. Folks, this has been such a pleasure bringing this artist to you. I think a lot of you have not heard of Kyoki, but I think you're going to after this because uh, he's yeah. out in the world now. He's speaking everywhere. His goal is to be around the world yeah. and to have that message, which is so important out there. So thank you. Thank you. And I um, really appreciate it. Me too. And yeah. I, I, I uh, if I'm not mistaken, the gift that you get back is that you apply to your own art. And I am really excited to see how well all these interactions with other creatives um, expands you. Yeah, so, it's... Um, can go make it happen. Yay! So thank you, everybody. Kiyoki Flag and me are going to say goodbye thank from Squaw Valley, California. And we might even do a little more with Kiyoki because he has more to share. But for now, we're going to say goodbye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>